Peace. Yeah, I just wanted to take a moment to build on um, the solar facts. Um, our solar facts are just a body of lessons that represent one of the eight points of the universal flag. Um, you look at, you know, the flag of the guys and nurse, you see the sun that has eight points on it. And uh, those eight points represent eight separate bodies of lessons that all comprise 120 or 120 lessons that we study. Uh, one of those bodies, which is the last set that we actually learn, is called our solar facts. Now, you know, a lot of people that may have come across our solar facts, or even a lot of guys and nurse, you know, they're very basic. Um, you know, but they hold a lot of power and a lot of information. Um, the solar facts are basically a list of the distance that the planets are from the sun. For example, you know, Mercury is 36 million miles away from the sun. Venus 67 million miles away from the sun. You know, and it goes on and on all the way up to Pluto, which is 3 billion 680 million miles away from the sun, with a variation of 4 billion 400 million miles away from the sun. Um, you know, a lot of guys on Earth. When they get the solar facts, all they do is just sit there and do some numerological gymnastics and shit and then just add up the numbers and just come up with some idea of, you know, what it means to them. And, and if it's practical for them, that's cool. You know, I don't necessarily deal with my solar facts in that way. I don't just look at Mercury and say, Mercury, 36 million miles, uh, 3 and 6, uh, understanding equality, you know what I'm saying? And understanding equality, born's born, and then born, born, I don't deal with it all like that, you know? Um, solar facts is a form of urinology, you know what I'm saying? Urano, if you look that word up in the dictionary, U-R-A-N-O, it means celestial body, so urinology is the study of the celestial body. Um, like a form of astronomy when you get into studying the constellations and things like that. The solar facts gives you an idea of how the planets' dimensions are, the compositions of the planets, and how they actually function in relationship to each other, as well as the impact and the influence that they have on planet Earth. You know, a more watered-down version of that is, you know, uh, astrology, you know what I mean? Um, astrology is borrowed from ancient Kemetic civilization where we took the planets and made them into forms of symbolic imagery and psychodrama. What I mean by that is, you know, when we observed the planet Mercury, we gave it the title Tahuti, you know what I'm saying, or the Netur, or what some people call God, you know, of ancient Egypt or Kemetic sciences, they call it uh, Tahuti. Tahuti is symbolic to an Iblis bird. If you look at ancient, you know, uh, uh, hieroglyphs and stuff like that, you would see uh, a, 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 a um, being a zoomorphic form with an Iblis bird head, and it have a long beak. The reason why it had a long beak is because that is symbolic to communication. It's symbolic to being a scribe, and it's symbolic to penmanship. So Tahuti, as a force of nature or principle, was considered the communicator. Tahuti was the communicator between the worlds, you know what I'm saying? So in order to translate, in order to be that doorway and to pass messages back and forth, Tahuti had to be real swift, you see what I'm saying? Now Tahuti was transmutated into uh, the science of Mercury, you know, when you get into other different civilizations that gleaned a lot of the teachings from the ancient Kemetic people or the ancient Egyptians, you know. Um, a lot of y'all are more familiar with Mercury, you know. Uh, Mercury had the winged helmet and the winged feet or things like that. And then you get how people who are considered Geminis or Virgos, how their ruling planet is Mercury and how they're called communicators or the air signs and, you know, you know, they're very swift and changeable, or, you know, all of those different things, like I said, are very watered down from the ancient sciences that we dealt with. Now, when we observe the planets as well as the constellations, instead of us just pointing out these, you know, rocks up in the sky, what we did is we designed psychodrama, or we gave those, those planets 
and constellations names and identities in order to convey the way in which they function in a story form. It was a lot more palatable and a lot more tangible for our people to understand when we put it in that form. You know, it's like um, if I wanted to teach somebody about, you know, the principle of, um, you know, working you know what I'm saying? I may tell them about the story of the grasshopper and the ant. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a it's a very um, poignant way to convey certain principles, procedures, as well as values. And that's the same thing we did with the observation of the celestial bodies. Because as above, so below. You know, so the way we got a better understanding of how our relationships are formed here on Earth, we got a better understanding of how the relationships are formed in the celestial spheres. You know what I'm saying? So when we deal with solar facts, we're not just looking at the distances that the planets are from the sun and just saying we're making up numbers and doing all of these mathematical gymnastics to sound intelligent. No, we actually study the planets. I mean, some gods don't do it. Some Earths don't really do it, but I do. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the gods that I know and a lot of the Earths that I do know also study the composition of the planets, the dimensions of the planets, their relationship to each other and things like that. Now, on a psychological level, for a person who considers themselves an original person, you know what I'm saying, and the planet Earth being their home, you should know the dimensions of your home, you know what I'm saying? You should know, you know, if you have a house being built from the ground up, you should know, you know, the land, the square my, the square inches or whatever that you're building that land, you're building that home on, you know, the same way that you should know the the square footing of your, of your, your home, you know what I'm saying? It's like the planet Earth, we also have a, a body of lessons called actual facts, and we learn, like, you you know, Mount Everest is 29,141 feet high, Pacific Ocean 68 million, 634,000 square miles, sound travels 1,120 feet per second, just, you know, Arctic Ocean 390,000 square miles. We learn actual facts like that because this is the dimension of our homeland. So, you know, it allows you to see beyond the horizon, you know what I'm saying? Um, when you learn things like that, it allows you to open up your sphere of imagination, and it allows you to see the potential for growth and development, because you're presented with actual facts that shows you that potential for development, that potential for growth. If certain information never comes into your sphere of awareness, how do you know that it's out there? How do you know that it exists? You know, I deal with youth all the time in my program. Some of them is in 10th grade. Some of them is in 11th grade, and I ask them, you know, what you're going to do when you get out of high school? Some of them say I'm going to college, but most of them always say that their college is just right within the locale. You know, they're within the city of Atlanta, so they're in the city of Bethlehem, which is Buffalo. And they can't think outside of that because they've never been anywhere or they've never had the information to be able to look beyond that horizon. Now, imagine the psychology and the psychological edge that a child has by learning these actual facts. They know that Mount Everest is, is uh, basically at the same height that the clouds are from the planet Earth. You know what I'm saying? They know that, you know, um, you know, the Pacific Ocean is so vast. They know that, you know, the planet is this particular distance from the sun and, and also that it takes a certain amount of time for the sunlight to actually reach the surface of that planet. It expands their mind. And it shows them that this universe is a lot more vast than they would even consider it to be. And it also gives them the opportunity to see different potentials for growth and development in different areas of their life. So, you know, the solar facts are a lot deeper than what a lot of people, you know, may look at on the surface, you know. So it's not about, you know, debating whether or not Mercury is actually 36 million miles away from the sun or if it's 34 million, 386 million miles away from the sun or... It's not, that's not the purpose of the actual facts to debate about that. The purpose of the actual facts is how do they function by studying this information? What kind of, what does it do to you psychologically to know information on this level? How does it expand the mind? What does it mean to study the composition, the dimensions, and the relationships of these planets to your planet that you live on? What kind of insight does it give you into those horoscopes that you got your face in in the daily newspaper? You know what I'm saying? So the solar facts are deeper than what they appear to be on the surface. So don't take this shit on face value. And those of y'all that are on the outside that may come across lessons and you want to sit there and be on some Dr. York 
debating whether or not this is the specific dimensions of what these actual facts say or what the solar facts say. Ask a question of function. How does this information function in the life of a person who is memorizing and reciting and thinking on the level of these particular dimensions? What does that say about their origin in this world, and how does that orientate them in the universe to know those dimensions? So with that said, you know, if y'all got questions, just ask. You know what I'm saying? Gods as well as earths and people on the outside that come across these lessons and you don't really know how they're used or how they function. Ask somebody. Just don't assume what we use them for. You know what I'm saying? So with that said, I want to say peace and have a beautiful day.